Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video we're going to be covering our fourth problem in our dynamic programming series entitled abbreviation. The problem states you can perform the following operations on a string a as follows. Number one, you can capitalize zero or more of a's lowercase letters and two, you can delete all of the remaining lowercase letters in A. Given two strings A and B, determine if it's possible to make A equal to B as described. If so, print yes on a new line, otherwise print no. For example, given the string A equal to A, B, C, D, E, where B and C are lowercase, and B equal to A, B, D, E, where they're all uppercase, in A, if we can convert the lowercase b uh, to an uppercase b and then delete the lowercase c, it will match b. If we have a, the string a equal to a, b, c, d, e, where b and c are lowercase, and the string b equal to a, f, d, e, matching is not possible because we can only capitalize or discard lowercase letters, they can't be changed. And note that the constraints for this problem are going to be uh, q, which is the number of queries, is going to be between 1 and 10. Uh, the length of the number of characters in our strings a and b is going to be between 1 and 1,000. And uh, the string a is going to consist of uppercase and lowercase letters, and string b will only consist of uppercase English letters. So let's take a look at an example to see how we might approach this. So the example we're going to look at, uh, I've constructed, and it is uh, the string A equal to lowercase a, b, a, a, and then a capital A at the end, and string B is just going to be two capital A's. So the first thing to note about this problem is the two operations, um, capitalizing any lowercase letters in the first step, and then deleting the rest of the lowercase letters. We can we don't need to do that all at once as we sort of solve this problem. We can do it one at a time. Um, so the way we're going to sort of do this is we're going to approach this recursively, and then we're going to optimize this uh, with a dynamic programming technique called memoization. Um, so one of the recursive calls that we're going to make is trying to erase a lowercase. Uh, letter and the other one is going to be capitalizing it, which we'll only able to be able to do if uh, the lowercase letter matches the uppercase letter that we're currently looking at. So the way we're sort of going to approach this is we are going to first try and match uh, the first uppercase letter. And after that point, we'll be trying to match the second one and so on and so forth. And the first recursive call we're going to make is trying to erase the lowercase a. So we'll do this sort of depth first mode. And what that'll end up looking like is the follow. So if we remove the first lowercase a, we end up with b, a, a, a. And then we're going to remove the lowercase b again. We're going to remove the next a and the next a. And at this point, um, we can see that they're not going to be equal. Uh, so we're going to sort of end this recursive call. And we'll step back up to this lowercase a, capital A. And uh, the second recursive call in our recursive function that we're going to make is capitalizing this a. And when we do that, we end up with a match here. So it's pretty easy to see from this that we can find a correct solution, but how do we know we're not going to time out? So a way uh, to sort of look at this is to draw the rest of the branches of this sort of recursive tree, um, even though they didn't get called. So if we do that, it looks as follows. And uh, what I want to highlight here is the repetition uh, in some of these trees. So I've color coded them here. You can see basically that a lot of these uh, points in these trees um, are duplicates. And we don't end up getting to these because we found our so solution early. But if we have a, recur a set of recursive calls where we don't hit our solution immediately, we're going to end up ha hitting these duplicate calls. So like I said before, we're going to use a technique, a dynamic programming technique called memoization. In this case, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, in a hash set, uh, store the basically pairs of strings. And if we ever hit a pair of strings that we've seen before, we're going to exit out of uh, this recursive sort of call stack at least once. We're not going to proceed further down it. Um, and this is going to highly optimize our solution. Um, so that's sort of the first step, but there's a few other things that I want to highlight. Uh, the, the, the first one of them is that we're going to stop after a mismatch. And what I mean by a mismatch is you can see um, in this pair of strings here and in this pair of strings here, we get to the point where we are trying to match uh, a B with an A. And because we can't change or discard a capital letter, 
we know we're never going to be able to match the string at this point so we're going to return at, at this point so that's the first thing that'll further optimize our code the second one is that we're going to stop whenever the size of a is less than the size of b doing uh, due to sort of removing lowercase letters so you could imagine if a was a little bit longer uh, any point where we basically hit this case where the length of our a string is less than the length of our b string we're going to return because we know we are not going to get to a valid solution either and then most importantly um, we are actually going to approach this by erasing uh, matching letters and having the sort of base condition of our recursive function to be when b is empty. So visually I've drawn this by not removing any of the characters, but when we actually get to here, the way this will work is when we uh, capitalize this A, instead of actually capitalizing it, what we're, gonna, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to remove just the first character of each of these strings. Uh, so when we're looking at a lowercase ca character, we basically, the, the first recursive call we're going to make is, re is removing that. So we'll do that, and then we'll make a recursive call passing in string A and string B, where B hasn't changed, and we've just removed the first character of B. After we've made that recursive call, the second recursive recall that we're going to make, we're just going to remove the first character in our string B, and this basically uh, mimics um, matching the first two characters and so we can just remove them so ultimately what we're looking for is an empty string B which means that we've matched all of the characters in our string B and then at that point the only thing we have to do is check that the remaining characters in our string A if there are any there are all lowercase because we know we can just remove them so in this example I don't have any uh, preceding lowercase characters after this letter here but if we did have you know X Y Z and we hit this condition here where B string had been emptied we could still check you know are they all lowercase they are and return true um, so those are the three things I wanted to mention and uh, with that we can take a look at our code so here is the start of our C++ solution we've declared our hash set of strings uh, memo which stands for memoization uh, globally as well as our boolean possible isn't the best way to do this but it um, it it me means that we don't have to pass these in to our recursive function which saves us a little bit of typing and then in our uh, abbreviation function here because we're going to have multiple calls to this we're initializing uh, possible to false and clearing our hash set from the previous call and then we make our first call to our recursive function a and b and at the end here based on what possible is set to if it's true we output yes and if it's false we output no so let's take a look at our recursive function so here we can see our base cases at the top sort of um, we are first checking if we have found a solution in a previous recursive call if so return and also we're checking the condition that uh, the size of a is greater than or equal to b still if not we're returning because we know we're not going to hit a valid solution at this point point. and here's our actual base case so if b is empty at this point check that all of the characters that are in uh, a if there are any um, are uppercase and if so set possible to true and return and uh, then we get to the meat of our recursive function here so we're inserting uh, our two strings which we are doing by just sort of adding them together and putting a, a hash in between them or a pound sign and uh, we're saving the pair that's returned from this insertion and uh, the second element in our pair is going to be a boolean which means whether we were able to insert it or not so if it already existed the boolean will be set to false in which case we've seen this before so we are taking advantage of the memoization and we're going to stop uh, the recursive calls on this path and go to the next one um, at this point we then save the first character so if we if this is if we haven't seen this before um, we're going to continue down the function and we uh, save the first character in our string and then re we remove it and we check was that first character lower uh, a lowercase character if so we make our first call to our recursive function if it's an uppercase ca character we don't have the ability to remove it so we can't make that first call 
Um, then we check after that um, if the uppercase uh, version of the lowercase letter. So if it's lowercase, it'll be converted to upper. If it's upper, it just stays the same. If it's not equal to the first element or character in our string B, then we want to return because this is the case where we know that we're not going to be able to match uh, the two strings from this point. Um, but if they are equal, so if we have a case where you know A is equal to A, um, like we saw previously, we're then going to erase the first character of our string B and then make our second recursive call. And by doing this, uh, we'll, able to, we'll be able to get to our uh, full solution. Um, so there's one thing I want to note, uh, thanks to Dennis who uh, reviewed this solution and he pointed out that uh, it's actually more efficient if instead of erasing the first element um, we pop off the last element which i definitely agreed with because it's sort of general knowledge that whenever you erase from a string the time complexity um, is linear but i actually looked it up and it says that it's unspecified um, but in general it's linear um, and then I ran a small benchmarking test, and it seemed to have no difference for just erasing the first character versus popping off the last one using the method pop back. So it's not clear to me um, what actually the time complexity of an erase is for the first character of a string, but in general, I think it is um, better to use pop back if you can versus erasing the first uh, element. Um, so you know, transitioning to time complexity, speaking of that, um, the time complexity for this, I'm not entirely sure. I don't believe using the master uh, theorem, which is sort of a theorem you can use for determining the time complexity of a recursive algorithm can be used here because we're using memoization and some other small optimizations. But if you think of a worst case where you have basically, you know, m imagine that string B is only one character and it's a capital A and string A is 9,000 or 999 Z's and then uh, one A at the end. You'd end up basically making a thousand recursive calls and then hitting your solution and even if you modify that slightly um, the branches that you end up taking uh, are never really going to increase it to a quadratic solution. Um, so I'm pretty sure that this is uh, linear. Um, if this, uh, er if you're erasing the first character of your string is also linear, then this would possibly be quadratic. But take this with a grain of salt because I'm not actually entirely sure uh, for the time complexity of this. And uh, Dennis also posted a more modern solution that used um, string views and this really neat a way to hash two strings instead of the method that I used where you add them together that just creates a really long string. Um, so if you want to uh, take a look at the link down below, uh, it will link to a Godbolt link um, using the C++17 code. It also uses string views as I mentioned, um, but note that hacker rank doesn't support C++17 yet, it only supports up to C++14. So this is more just for education no purposes than it is for something that you could actually go and use to, to solve this problem. And last but not least, we'll take a look at one other solution, and that is the Python solution. So very similar to the C++ solution. Uh, the only two differences really being that in order to use these globals, we have to sort of define these at the top of the function, which uh, is irritating but also good because you shouldn't use globals in your code um, and there's just slightly some uh, different methods on the next slide here uh, where instead of you know passing the strings to is lower and to upper um, where it's actually only upper here there are methods that you call on the string and uh, and note that actually if a is empty is lower will return false so you need this extra condition here where you say a dot is lower or the length of a is equal to zero which is slightly different than in c++ code because when you make a call to the all of function that passes it the lambda that checks if each character is uh, lowercase um, if there's no characters it will return true uh, which i think is actually the better way to approach this and i was a bit surprised that um, Python's is lower operates that way, but c'est la vie. Um, and the only thing to note is, once again, similar to the last video that I made, uh, this Python solution only passed, I think, you know, 13 out of the 16 test cases, once again due to runtime error. Um, 
So it wasn't a time complexity problem, and I, I'm not exactly sure. I have a feeling, like I said in the last video, that it's due to sort of a memory limitation, which I find interesting because C++ and Java seem to not run into that issue, but Python does, um, which is too bad because I really enjoy writing these solutions in Python because uh, it's so succinct a lot of the times, but it seems like it shouldn't be your first choice when it comes to these coding competitions. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.